Hey there, I'm Steve. And I'm Jen. And we are The Road Less Traveled. And if you watched our last video, which was kind of a part one, this is a part two to that. So in the previous video, we talked about how we were conflicted as to what we were going to do next, whether it be uh, a permanently settling or just finding a home base. But we've been going through some, some challenges and some thoughts and we know we want to do something different. So this video is mostly about what we're going to be doing next. Yes. So one of the things that is really exciting is that we can live anywhere. Like we don't need to worry about living in a, a city. So we, we've just got a lot of freedom that way. It's exciting and it's painful at the same time. <laughs> I was Too say. many choices. <laughs> With that freedom becomes like you can live anywhere, which makes your choices exponential and it just makes it much harder. So what Steve and I did was sit and talk about our overall life goals, what we want, because we have to have some kind of filter to run our ideas through because we have gone everywhere from like have a vacation home to have a home base mm -hmm. to build a house to like we have gone everywhere and that can be a, a lot of mental energy spent and RVing takes up enough mental energy and kids and work and all of that so I wanted to run through our kind of first filters we have a few filters mm -hmm. so one is having a financial cushion we want to make sure that when we settle we don't use up all of our money basically and with the housing market like it is now around the u.s in most places we visited that's something that we have to really consider we never want to be house poor and we want we don't want to use up all our cash so that's number one and we don't want to settle and buy a house that we don't really like just because the market's crazy true like we want to like the house enough the second one we're trying to figure out is how do we bring in some extra income is that having a property with uh, another unit an adu on it that we can rent out we've gone down that we've talked about getting a vacation rental so can we bring in some extra money or is it being in a city in a place to where there's jobs Right, so that money can come in many different forms of fashions, all legal, of course, but trying to bring in some extra money. Um, secondly, is giving us travel flexibility, and so that we can still travel in the summers, we can, you know, take off, because we do, if we settle, the kids will go back in school, so we work around their breaks. So giving us travel flexibility, you know. If we get nine to five job, um, if you get a nine to five job, then we can't go travel in the summer. Mm -hmm. So we're, that's a consideration. So another criteria, maybe the fourth criteria, is uh, community for our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve mentioned in the last video how we were in this RV park in Kelso, Washington. Random ran into a family that had kids the exact same age. They played all day with these kids. It was fantastic, and it made us both happy. So we want to make sure that we can have that for our kids. And then and that's that's part of like some of the challenges of that like I grew up in the suburbs and it was great because you could just go out and play with your friends which was just which was just awesome and I think I would love for my kids to be able to experience that and just to have the freedom to go out and knock on another kid's door and see if they can come out and play like I think that's pretty awesome but <laughs> but I'm not sure I want to go back to the the, the suburban life either. So. Part of the concern about settling again, settling down, and it's just kind of getting back into that schedule to where you're just constantly, all right, we gotta get up, gotta get the kids to school, and then you go to work, and then you just have that time limitation and you're always doing and, and not seeing much. So there's a lot of benefits to go living in suburbia, um, but the, the fear is that we're gonna get back into that scheduling and, and, and always on the go and not enough traveling seeing what's out in the world and, and just kind of getting back into um, the slog if you will um, so that's a little bit where we're conflicted we could either go into suburbia that's definitely not the road less traveled or you know we've thought about do we go get go somewhere with some acreage and some property and do some stuff to rent out like airbnbs and stuff it sounds fun and exciting and also scary at the same time just because uh neither of us have really lived in a rural area so we don't really know what that's <laughs> what that's like yeah i mean even thinking about that 
house that we were going to get and renovate. Like we have no experience renovating. We don't know what we're doing, but that's part of the learning experience that we want to continue to have in our lives. So that's our criteria. And I also want to talk about one other criteria that is, is where people say that maybe we're looking for a unicorn and, and we're looking for a weather. Certain, certain weather pattern, <laughs> certain climate. People think we are ridiculous. Let's just say that. I don't want to. I don't want to to be in a place with cold winters. So Steve wants warmth and sun, and I want seasons. And I don't care about the sun. I like the sun, but I don't. Yeah, need, I don't like a lot of rain either. I don't need to be in Yuma, Arizona. That would be too much for me. And even when we were in Southern California, I, it felt like a lot of lot of sun. I just needed a nice gray day. So we're very opposite yeah, my ideal climate would be san diego and that's not mine because it's the same every single day so it's, it's other people have agreed with me i think i'm a little crazy with that but um so we we're trying to find a spot and i think we found a few which we'll go over in a minute that i don't need snow like for a minute we were looking at colorado because it's beautiful there's affordable houses and then Steve started looking at the weather and the snow, and I don't want to be in snow, you know, for five, six months of the year. That just doesn't sound like fun. I'm thinking if we travel in the summer, then it's okay if it has hot summers. Right, and, and I could get down with 50 or 60 as a high in January. That's fine, as long as it gets to 30s, 40s, that's fine. So we have pretty much narrowed down west of Texas, particularly southwest. Really, southwest is where we're looking. Um, you may have some suggestions for us, but just know we're not living in Texas west. We're both from the east. I'm from the southeast. Steve's from the east coast. We don't want to live on the east coast anymore. Mm -hmm. Fair enough? Yeah. For now. Uh -huh. <laughs> we we'll change our minds a little bit. <laughs> so, Steve, you want to talk about some of the cities we're looking at that we think we're exploring at least? So right now we're in Boise. <laughs> Which he says funny. Is that how they say it? I think they say it Boise. I say Boise. I always said Boise too, but I think they say Boise. So I'm trying to get down. Just trying to fit in with the <laughs> yeah. locals. <laughs> All right. So from here, we're going to go south and visit St. George and check that out. We have some uh, kind of friends there. No, Full-time family friends. We don't know them all that well. But sort of friends in St. George. And we're going to visit them and they said they love it there. So we're going to... We're gonna check that out, and then we're gonna go from there to Prescott, Arizona, which is another one. They call it Prescott, not Prescott. So I'm gonna do mm -hmm. that too, and see how that is. And um, in terms of other places, we're not gonna hit yet because we're gonna go back east for the holidays. Um, but I think Paso Robles is a. It's another one, Robles, not Robles. We just picked the cities that no one knows how to pronounce correctly. <laughs> that that sure. looks like an interesting mm -hmm. place too. And uh, we might get some land there, that sounds fun. It's kind of a, a, a touristy uh, wine area. Um, but again, we're all over the place, so who knows? <laughs> and Sacramento is still an option. That was actually our original location. And we were from Boise gonna go to Reno and then Sacramento, check it out the fires there and really our timeline to go back east for the holidays just doesn't fit in so we're going to do that later we've heard reno's a great town we just haven't been um so that kind of sitting out there um so yeah we may be some of the weird ones thinking about california when everyone else is leaving but new mexico maybe still on the list i don't know um two two questions for you if you can be so kind as to help us out. One, if you have any ideas of locations that fit our criteria that we have not explored. And two, if you grew up in the country, mm. what is it like growing up in the country? Because I don't know what that's like for kids. I know you don't just like go knock on your neighbor's door because they could be miles away and down a busy road. So how does that all work? And is it is it good as a kid to, to grow up in the country? Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. And some of that you just have experienced for yourself. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has grown up in uh, more a rural area, we'd love to hear from you. 
yeah if there's any cities we missed like i said it has to be on the the west don't give us don't give us cities in the east <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're good there um but i'm sure there's there's towns that we haven't explored that may fit our criteria what else that's it yeah and so we're gonna try to film some of these cities and let you know what we think of them and just give you a little bit more of not just us talking but out out doing some stuff but that, that's it for now that's mm -hmm. it thanks for watching thank you